If you don't know by now, there's this thing called ChatGPT that got released. And it's basically an AI that you can talk to to help you get things done. It was released a couple months ago by a company called OpenAI. And ever since, people have been using it to help them with school, their work, you name it. And there's a lot of debate online right now over whether this is going to help with any jobs or replace any jobs. One of the main jobs of concern right now is programming jobs. And so to test it out in a recent video of mine, I used it to help me build a full-fledged website and I thought it was impressive. However, I thought about it a little bit and I realized I was already pretty proficient in web development. So in this video, I wanna see if I could use ChatGPT to help me code and deploy a project in something where I have no prior knowledge or experience. And since game development is pretty visually appealing, I figured let's do a video where I try and code and deploy a browser game to the web from scratch using ChatGPT. This way I can test how powerful of a tool it will really be when I don't know anything about what I'm trying to build. And at the end of the video, we're going to deploy deploy our web browser game to one of the best web hosting platforms around, which is Hostinger. And Hostinger, of course, happens to be the sponsor of this video. And if you go to the link in the description and you use code Nick White at checkout, you're going to get 10% off your order. I've talked about how web hosting can be a little bit confusing, but Hostinger has the most intuitive platform around. And with the premium plan, you're going to get all the features you need to deploy your website in minutes. That includes a free domain as well as an email associated with that domain. You'll also be able to create up to 100 websites and you'll have 100 gigabytes of SSD storage. So you will be able to play around and deploy whatever you need to, whether that's websites or apps or games, etc. It's as easy as signing up with that premium plan. So if you're interested, make sure that you go into the description of this video, click my link, and then when you're at checkout, use my code Nick White, and you will get an additional 10% off your order. And once again, later in the video, when we deploy our game to the web, I will show you how easy this platform is to use. All right, so let's get started building our game. If you haven't even tried ChatGPT yet, you really should. I will link it in the description, but all you gotta do is go to openai.com and in the top, it's gonna say, try ChatGPT. You sign up with an account with OpenAI using Google. It takes like two minutes and then you'll be redirected to the interface for ChatGPT. The interface looks like this, so it'll have some examples, capabilities and limitations, but you can ignore that. All you have to do is type and have a conversation with it using the input text at the bottom of the page. So what I recommend is you just talk to ChatGPT like it's a person you're talking to and it will respond like it's a person. Now you guys can use it for free, but ChatGPT Plus did just come out, so I got it. It's 20 bucks a month. You get available even when demand is high, faster response speeds, and priority access to new features. So since I'm doing a video right now and I want the faster responses, I'm gonna use it. But yeah, like I said, I basically just have a conversation with ChatGPT and I say, hey, I wanna do this, help me. So let's start with a greeting. Hey, ChatGPT. GPT. ChatGPT says, hello, how can I help you today? I want you guys to be able to follow along with this video. So we're going to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I told ChatGPT, I'd like to build a web browser game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Can you help me do that? ChatGPT says, of course, I'd be happy to help you. First, let's talk about what game you want to build. Do you have a specific idea in mind? I really don't have an idea in mind, but hopefully ChatGPT does. So let's test its creativity and ask it for some suggestions. So I said, I don't currently have any ideas. Can you help me come up with one that isn't too difficult to build, but it's also interesting. ChatGPT says, sure, how about a simple memory card matching game? Game consists of a grid of cards with hidden images. You flip over two at a time to find the matching pair. If the cards match, they stay flipped over and the player earns points. If the cards don't match, then they have to try again. The game continues until all pairs have been found. I think this is perfect because while it's not too intense, I've never coded a game before, so I think I'll be able to learn something. So does that sound like something you wanna build? I'm gonna say, yes, that sounds perfect. The ChatGPT says, awesome. Here's a high level overview of the steps you'll need to build the game, create HTML structure, add CSS, write the JavaScript, and then test. So this looks pretty straightforward. And now let's start building our project. So what I got on my computer right now is a project folder called ChatGPT game. And we got three files for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We got Visual Studio Code running too. So you can see all these files right here. So let's just follow these steps one by one. We need to create the HTML structure first. Now, one of the things ChatGPT is really good at is generating the exact code snippet you need for your project. You just got to make sure you're very clear when you tell it exactly what you need. So I said, perfect. Can you help me generate some HTML structure code for my game. So they give me like the body of the HTML, but I actually need the template HTML too. So I'm gonna ask for that as well. So here we got, certainly here's the template HTML file I provided with the code from earlier. So you can just copy the code snippets on the top, right? We'll go over to our file, paste it, boom, go over. Let's open this file in our web browser. 
And look at that, this is our game. Wow, this looks amazing. So it looks like for our cards, ChatGPT is using images with image one JPEG and image two JPEG, and they explain that we'll actually need to get images for these. So I'm just gonna go to Google and I typed in card back PNG, and I'm just gonna take this for the matching card game. So now we got card back, and then we'll go back over to our browser and obviously these cards are way too big. So I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, cool, can we add some CSS to go with the HTML now? I'm using separate files for my CSS and JavaScript, by the way. And just like that, we get a ton of styles. I'm not even gonna look through any of this. I'm just gonna copy over and paste it into our CSS file. We'll go back to ChatGPT, and they also, nicely enough, provide us the link to hook it up from our HTML. So let's just go over here. Might be a different file name, so we're just gonna make sure. Yeah, memory game CSS, ours is called app CSS, so we'll just switch that. And now when we go back over to our browser, this is what the game looks like. Okay, that's kind of cool. So since I'm not even reading the code, let's just see if ChatGPT is gonna code this whole game on its own. I'm gonna say, cool, looks good. Can we add some JavaScript to make the game functional? So it looks like we get all the JavaScript we need for the game to be functional. I don't know what any of it does. I'm not even gonna read it. I just wanna paste it all in and see if this whole game's gonna get coded without me even trying. Let's go over to HTML. Let's go down, add our script tag. We're gonna add app.js instead of memory game js and let's go back to our browser and test this out so when we click the question mark i guess the front of our card appears which is the back of our card so i guess i mixed up earlier what i was supposed to do i'm supposed to get the front of the cards not the back of the cards i guess the back of the cards in the game right now ChatGPT is recommending question marks which makes sense since there's only two cards i asked ChatGPT, hey can we have some more cards there's only two right now told me how to add more it's just copying and pasting more of the same code copy this head over paste save and now since this is youtube i think the front of our cards should be pokemon because people like pokemon so i added charizard and pikachu so those are what we'll be using so now we have four cards and there should be two matches two pikachus two charizards so now if we go back to the matching game we got charizard we got pikachu obviously this looks crazy so i'm gonna ask it to adjust the size of the front of the cards i said awesome the front of the cards are too big when they appear can we add some css to fix that i think it mistook it for the question marks so i said sorry i meant the side of the card when it's flipped so like the images i guess that's where the mix-up happened ChatGPT thinks the flipped is the back you know, semantics there or whatever. So maybe that's not like a big mistake. So now we get the CSS to fix the image sizes. Let's head over, let's paste this, go back to our game. It should be pretty straightforward. Now the Pikachu is the right size, Charizard, yeah, perfect. So all in all so far, I don't know anything that's going on in the code. I haven't really read through it and we've got this. So that is pretty good. Hence why ChatGPT is being talked about so much. I'm able to build things this quickly without knowing anything about it. So obviously right now when we're playing our game, it doesn't tell us if we're matching or not. There's no score, there's nothing. So I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, cool, I can't tell when I'm matching correctly or not. When I flip the cards, can we add some code to signify that to the user? So ChatGPT is saying to add a background color of light green to our CSS. Just go down here, copy paste that. And then let's go over and we have this disabled cards function. I don't know if this is already in our JavaScript, I would imagine. It looks like this, so we're just gonna copy and paste this, and then let's go back over to our game. So the background color wasn't showing, so I added border, but it's saying that no matter which two cards I pick, it's a match, which obviously is wrong, so I'm gonna tell ChatGPT. Cool, I added four cards now though, and the matching mechanics aren't working. It says it's always a match no matter what. ChatGPT says the issue you're encountering is because the matching logic only checks if the first and second cards have the same data framework attribute, which we don't have. So I guess it's gonna check if the data framework attribute is present and if the images are the same. So like data framework image one for both of these, if we click these, it's a match, or if we click these as a match, and then in the JavaScript, it's gonna like shuffle them up, I guess. So I'm just gonna copy this into our HTML and then we'll just update with those images once again. And now hopefully it should work. Let's go here. We got Pikachu, Charizard. See, there's no green box, so it's not a match. And then she could Pikachu Charizard again. It's not a match, it's not a match. So then this is also not a match. And then this is a match. So we get the green and then we're successful obviously because they don't flip back over. And then we go here and here and boom, we get another match. So honestly, I don't know how long it's been, maybe 10 to 15 minutes and we already got this built. I don't know anything about matching games. I don't even really know what's going on in the code that much, 
but see how useful ChatGPT is in building anything. So to continue the game, I'm gonna say, awesome, that worked perfectly. Can we add a score for the player that starts at zero and then increments each time there's a match? So ChatGPT says, yes, we have our game container in our HTML already. So it looks like we just need this score container now. So let's head over so you can see we have game container here. So let's just go below, I think it's saying, and then do score container. And then down here we have the disable cards and update score function. So let's just go back over to our JavaScript. And then I think we have this disable cards and there is no update score function yet. So that's cool. Let's go back over to our HTML here, boom. And then our score is down here. That's really ugly. But as we can see, if we get a single match right here, our score is one with the Charizards. And then if we get the second match, our score is two. So of course, technically I know how to put the score HTML above the game HTML and then add some basic styles to center it, but we're gonna just use ChatGPT all the way through. So I said, can we add the score above the game in the center of the page? I'd also like the text to be larger and for it to look cooler and stand out. So then we get some CSS here. Let's go over to our CSS. Let's go to the bottom, paste, boom. Let's go back. And now our score is down here. It looks a little bit better, but I did say I wanted it above. I don't know if, uh... oh yeah, and then they said, just put the score above, makes sense. Let's go back to our HTML. Let's delete this. Let's go back above our game container now. Score container, back to our game. Boom, now the score is at the top. And if we play the game, I'm actually bad at a matching game, that's crazy. And now score two. So this is looking good. Now I'm gonna say cool, just like how we added a light green color for successful matches. Can we add red if it's a failed match? So we get mismatch background color red. So let's go over to our CSS and add this. Let's go right here, boom. And then we get some code for the unflip cards. Let's go over here. I don't know if this is gonna just like make them all red by default, which is kind of bad. Now let's go back to the game. And if we get an unsuccessful match, yeah, that looks good. So we get red, and then if we get a successful match, we get green. So right now we've only got four cards, so I'm gonna get a couple more Pokemon and add some more cards. So I just added cards for Squirtle and Bulbasaur, so now there should be eight cards total and four matches total that we could have. And if we go to our game and refresh, it could go, so we got now Pikachu and Bulbasaur. And so we got two Pikachus. There we go, score two. And then boom, maximum score of four. Now you could obviously see when we refresh that these cards will get shuffled. So you can see there's two Squirtles at the end, for example. So when I refresh, there should not be two Squirtles here. And Pikachu, like for example, probably won't be in the first place, right? So when we refresh, See, Pikachu's not in the first, and obviously there's not going to be two Squirtles at the end. So each time we refresh and start a new game, the cards get completely shuffled. So this is actually kind of like a fully functioning game that we've built in like, I don't know how long it's been, 15 minutes. Maybe it's been a little bit more than that, 20 minutes maximum. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are saying that ChatGPT is all hype, but you do have to admit that without knowing anything about the code, I did build this basic version of a matching card video game in 20 minutes, whereas it would probably have taken me at least an hour if I was googling and trying to research and put all this code together from scratch myself so that's pretty impressive and that is why people care about it so much another thing we could easily add instead of just score for like how many matches we've got is how many misses we get so I told ChatGPT, perfect the game's looking great can we also add a counter to see how many times we've missed a match so we get that code it's basically just we have a score and then we'll have misses underneath the score so if we go back to our HTML here we'll just copy and paste this go back and then we'll have some functions so we'll have update miss and unflipped cards we'll go back to our javascript i don't even know what's going on uh, unflipped cards right here we'll just paste over that and hope that it works boom misses is over here obviously there's no styles for it so that's a miss so whenever we miss it gets incremented looks like it's good so far another miss and then we have two misses now and one score. So I don't know what kind of game mechanics there would be for a real matching game. Maybe we could do like, if you have more misses than score at the end, then you lose or something like that. I don't know. So I'm gonna say, thanks, that works. Can we add some CSS for the misses to make it look a little bit better as well? 
So we're gonna copy this, go over to our CSS, go down. It's probably just gonna be the same code as the score. Then we have score and misses here. So yeah, this looks exactly the same. It's honestly not the best user interface ever, obviously guys, but also, I mean, you could spend like forever developing like the perfect game, obviously. I don't know, for 20 minutes, I do think it's good. So to finish off this basic browser game, I asked ChatGPT, if we, can we make it so that if you have more matches than misses at the end, we say you win, and if there's more misses than matches, we say you lose. So it looks like we got ChatGPT giving us our JavaScript here, function called check win that we will add into our code at the bottom of the file. So let's just put it right here and then let's go back. And then we also get an update to our disable cards function somewhere in here. Yeah, here it is right here. And I guess it's going to check win if cards length match cards something. So let's go back to the game and test this out. So let's try and win. So we got Squirtle, two Squirtles. So there we go. And then we got Pikachu's right here. Oh, I'm killing it. So, we, I mean, we got this in the bag, right? And then boom, we win, right? So that's perfect. So instead of it saying score, I'm just gonna make it say matches. I just think that looks a little bit better. And then I think this is as far as I wanna go with this game. I think it gets the point across considering I don't know what's going on in the code. I've never built a game before, right? Like all of this JavaScript code. I mean, I get the gist of it a little, but I really didn't even read it. I really don't know what's going on in it that much. As you can see, I built this really quickly doing just a bunch of copy and paste, and it was pretty easy. So maybe I'll make improvements to this over time, but right now I'm going to host this on the best hosting platform around. Hostinger, I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to deploy this to the web. If you guys wanna play this game, I will link it in the description as well so you guys can go check this out and play it. But yeah, let's go throw this up and host it and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts on ChatGPT and using it. If you're interested in deploying an app or a website or a game like this to the web and you want it to be really easy, definitely check out Hostinger, go into the description, click the link, get that premium plan and then use code Nick White at checkout, you get 10% off. So Hostinger is really easy to use, right? So I have the premium plan, I log in, you know, you make an account and then at the top it's gonna say websites and all you have to do is create a new website. I'm gonna say create a new website. It says name your website by a domain. When you get the premium plan, it comes with the domain anyway. So I'm gonna select a domain and let's think we're gonna do, so I picked the domain matchthatpokemon.com, which I think is pretty good. It says, well done, you're ready. So just go to manage site. And then deploying a website on Hostinger is really this easy, guys. It's like almost effortless. You got your domain, so I've got everything all set up, matchthatpokemon.com. So if we go to this website, obviously nothing's up because we haven't put any code up yet, but you're just gonna go over to file manager and then right here, you just drag and drop your whole game. So you just drag and drop all those files and then we'll refresh on the site and it'll be live. So this is our entire game, ChatGPT game. These are all the files we just went through and we built with. So I'm just gonna upload all these files. Boom, they're all uploaded. And now this is the website that wasn't working literally two seconds ago. Here's our final website I took off cam so we could see it perfectly at matchthatpokemon.com. And as we could see, the code is working. So yeah, my browser game is officially deployed. If you guys want to try it out and play with it a little bit, it's going to be linked in the description as well. Now, overall, I've made two videos using ChatGPT to build projects. However, in the first one, I did web development and I knew what was going on pretty much every step of the way because I have a lot of experience in web development. However, in this video, I built a basic browser game and I've never built a game before and had no idea what was going on in the JavaScript. I pretty much blindly copied and pasted a lot of the code throughout this video. And while I do think it's important to have some understanding of coding to be able to do what I just did, I do think how it's super impressive that with basic coding now, you can just construct a prompt and then copy and paste the code and get something up and running like this. So will ChatGPT be replacing programming jobs? As of right now, I don't think so. However, I do think that it's going to automate a lot of busy work and speed up a lot of the mundane tasks that we have to do as programmers. So I do think it's an extremely valuable tool and it's just gonna keep getting more and more advanced. So I highly recommend if you haven't tried it out, at least go and check it out because it's free to do so and just takes a couple minutes. And who knows, maybe it's for some people and not for some people, but for me, I'm definitely gonna integrate it into my workflow. So thanks again, guys, for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna leave a thumbs up, that really helps my channel and definitely hit that subscribe button. Till next time, see you guys later. Peace.